The season kicks off with Louisiana Monroe coming to DKR. There's a lot of new variables with this year's team, so let's explore how things could look early on. How does ULM match up against Texas? What are the expectations for the offense and defense going into game one? And most importantly, how does this prepare us for the tough season ahead? As you know by now, stay up to date with everything going on behind the scenes of your favorite program at Inside Texas. Pre-game and post-game analysis, practice reports, and way more dropping daily over at InsideTexas.com. Com. Subscribe today. ULM is in the process of picking themselves up off the pavement, and so is Texas. Let's see how things will go in this year's season opener. Without further ado, let's get into it. ULM had a winless season in 2020 going 0-10. and 10. Terry Bowden, son of legendary Florida State coach Bobby Bowden, was brought in to turn ULM around. Terry Bowden has never reached the success of his father, but he has done some impressive things. He was the head coach of Auburn back in the mid-90s, going 11-0 in his first season. The next year, they went 9-1-1. In year three, he took Auburn to the SEC championship game, ultimately losing to Peyton Manning's Tennessee. In year four, things went sideways. After a decade-plus break from coaching, he got hired at North Alabama, later taking over Akron. He was let go in 2018, and then he was an analyst at Clemson for two years before landing the ULM gig in 2021. In his first year, ULM had four wins. And this sounds bad, but once you know their stats on the year, four wins is actually impressive, including a big upset against a Liberty team led by NFL quarterback Malik Willis. In year one, Bowden had hired struggling former head coach Rich Rodriguez to be the offensive coordinator. And you'd think a former head coach at Michigan, Arizona, OC at Old Miss would be able to field a competent offense, but that was not the case. The ULM offense was really bad last year ranking 128th out of 130 FBS schools. They were only successful on 35% of their plays, ranking below Kansas if added to the Big 12. In comparison, Oklahoma was successful on 48% of their plays, Alabama 47, and Texas 45%. But what was the cause of this dismal offensive performance? First, the quarterback position was in flux all season. Rodriguez started his son, Rhett Rodriguez, and he played until week four. Against Troy, he suffered a bad injury after puncturing his lung. He was in the ICU on a ventilator. Scary stuff. Then, true freshman Chandler Rogers stepped in and he took the reins for games 5 through 10. And he performed better than Rodriguez, though it still wasn't great. He ranks 10th out of 12 quarterbacks if added to the Big 12, and he played lesser competition. He had a 62% completion percentage, which is a little below league average. His biggest struggles came in the deep game, only completing 33.3% of his balls over 20 yards. The only quarterback in the Big 12 with a lower deep ball percentage was Casey Thompson at 32.6. Rodgers does add some spark in the run game, usually scrambling trying to keep the play alive. He had the fifth most scrambles if added to the Big 12 and he only started six games. But this isn't Roger's fault as you'll soon see. In week 11, coach's son Rhett Rodriguez returned to finish the season. Even though he was a statistically worse player, landing an awful 50.4 completion percentage. He graduated at the end of the season and it looks like Chandler Rogers will be ULM's guy. But the sophomore Rodgers and junior quarterback Jaya Wright have been in a battle for the starting role as well. Wright only had 20 attempts last year for 164 yards, but he provides similar running ability as Rodgers. So ULM feels it has some options at the position even going into the season. Now, I mentioned Rodgers had to run for his life fairly often last year. And that brings us to the main reason the ULM offense was ranked 128th out of 130 teams. The offensive line was the worst in the nation. In the pass game, they ranked 125th out of 130 teams in pass blocking. Three of this year's O-linemen performed near the bottom in the 2021 season. Peyton Dunn ranked 44th, Victor Cutler ranked 45th, and Kedrell Lewis ranked 54th out of 54 players if added to the Big 12. As a unit, their standard down sack rate was 123rd in the nation, and their passing down sack rate was 91st. If added to the Big 12, they are first in sacks at 18, first in quarterback pressures at 116, tied for second in quarterback hits at 20, and third in hurries at 78. This, of course, had negative effects on their quarterbacks, which then trickled down to their receiving core, having the 107th ranked receiving room in the nation. All Sun Belt Boogie Knight is their key receiver. He's their most utilized, getting 73 targets last season, 
and he plays exclusively in the slot and is a much needed easy access throw for a quarterback constantly under attack. He had three touchdowns on the season, so they aren't utilizing him for the big play, but more a steady presence in the short to intermediate game, nickel and diming you up the field. He's fairly quick, but not a pure speed guy by any means. He's more likely to use his body or footwork to make the catch, but he is effective in making the catch in traffic, having the highest contested catch percentage of added to the Big 12 at 75%. You'll find him hanging around that first down marker on needed third downs. ULM also brought in Kansas State transfer Tyrone Howell. He saw action in all games last year, but he wasn't a starter. He got 14 targets on the year, catching 7, putting up 98 yards on the season. He has good size at 6'2 and should be able to perform better going down to that group of 5 level. Their deep threat is their field receiver, Zach Jackson. 30% of his targets are past 20 yards for 5th if added to the Big 12, but he's not very effective, ranking 25th and only catching 57% of his targets. But quarterbacks did struggle with downfield accuracy, so with better opportunities, that catch rate should improve. And then you have Will Derrick, who was their second option at slot last year. And he was second in yards for ULM last season with 346. You should see a heavy dose of him this year as well. Their tight end, Zach Rasmussen, wasn't heavily utilized in the past game last year. With limited targets, only getting 10 passes on the season, catching six. But six of those catches, three were touchdowns. So we could see him far more utilized in the new offense. Clearly, the passing game was hobbled. So were they able to turn to the run game to get those needed yards? Nope. The offensive line failed at run blocking as well. They were last in the nation out of 130 teams in run blocking. Tackle Kedrell Lewis ranked 50th. Guard Peyton Dunn ranked 51st. And center turned left tackle Victor Cutler ranked 54th out of 54. On standard down line yards, the unit was 129th. And on passing downs, they were once again last in the nation. Their top running back, Andrew Henry, with 131 attempts, ranks last if added to the Big 12. Their second back in attempts, Malik Jackson, ranks 8th out of 16. But Jackson considered transferring, preferring a receiving role. Neither back was able to break 500 yards rushing on the season. But before we write them off, remember the offensive line gave them no shot. So there were really no bright spots to the ULM offense last year. A bad offensive line in both the run and the pass severely limited the quarterbacks, limiting the receivers, and they couldn't turn to the run game for any help either. Four wins last year actually looks really good knowing the offensive woes. But here's where this can all change in 2022. The ULM offensive coordinator in 21, Rich Rodriguez, took the head coach job at Jacksonville State. Terry Bowden hired Matt Kubik as the new offensive coordinator for this season, but he's actually not new to ULM. He was the offensive coordinator there from 2016 to 2019, and he had a high-powered offense. Over those three years, they averaged 181 yards rushing, 263 yards passing, and averaged 30.7 points per game. To put that in context, in 2019, the only schools that averaged 200 yards rushing and 250 yards passing per game were offensive juggernauts in Ohio State, Clemson, UCF, Oklahoma, and ULM. Do I expect Cubic to average those numbers game one against a Power 5 opponent? No, I don't but I do expect ULM's offense to improve drastically over the coming seasons. Ultimately, this is a good test for the Texas defense, not in the sense that passing it will be difficult, but that anything other than an A performance could prove troubling. They don't dominate, that's not exactly giving a rosy outlook for the remainder of the season. You're looking to see disruption and sacks from the defensive line. You want to see the run game be shut down by the linebackers. The secondary should hold them to low yards and get some interceptions while they do it. If ULM puts up more than 14 points, that's not ideal. They put up 10 on Kentucky last season and 14 on LSU for reference. Now let's look at the defensive side of the ball. But first, I'm happy to announce we have a brand new partner for this upcoming season, Prize Picks. Prize Picks is a US-based daily fantasy sports app where you can make college football player projections all season long. How does it work? You select two to five players and choose more or less on their projections. It could be passing yards, rushing yards, receiving yards, receptions, interceptions, fantasy scores, and more. And if those players score more or less than their prize pick projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. Just hop on the prize picks app or website, go to the college football tab and check out the player projections. For instance, will Bajan Robinson have more or less than 1,232 and a half yards rushing on the season? Or will Xavier Worthy have more or less than 1,078 and a half yards receiving on the season? It's a smooth process where you can make your entries in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. 
As a first time depositor, use promo code Texas Homer and you'll receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100. So sign up for prize picks, use promo code Texas Homer at sign up and add even more excitement to your game day. Link in the description. The ULM defense performed slightly better than their offense did, but here's the kicker they were still 97th in the nation overall. When Rich Rodriguez left for the new head coaching job, he also poached ULM's defensive coordinator. So they have a new guy there as well, and he should be familiar to Texas fans. Vic Koning is a journeyman coach starting back in the early 90s, and Texas fans were first introduced to Vic when he was the assistant head coach and co-DC at Kansas State in 2009. Later, he was the defensive coordinator for Neil Brown during his success at Troy. He then followed Neil to West Virginia in 2019. He was then let go to an off-the-field incident, and he stayed out of coaching in 2020 and 2021, before returning to be the DC under Bowden at ULM. Koning has a lot of work to do. Their run defense was 103rd overall. Their best run stopper is their nose, Caleb Thomas. He's the sixth best run stopping interior defensive lineman if added to the Big 12, and he has good size at 308 pounds. But after that, there's a drop off with the defensive tackle Quincy Ledette Jr. at 29th out of 37 players. The edge players don't provide any help in the run game either. Their second level is a different story with linebackers who do better in the run game. Linebacker Zach Woodard is fifth and Quay Drake is seventh in run stopping and easily the strongest aspect of their defense. Koning has a history of running a blend of the 4-2-5 and the 3-3-5. This allows a linebacker to move from off the ball to more of an edge roll depending on the situation. This gives flexibility for how the transfers Tristan Driggers and Carl Glass can be utilized in the linebacking core, but we have yet to see how they perform in the run game. The secondary doesn't shine in stopping the run. They only have one player in the top 25 with safety Jabari Johnson at 21st, but he might spin down to a more traditional nickel role in the 4-2-5. Corner has two new transfer starters we have yet to see. Independence Community College's Carlin Vigers and Kansas's Deuce Mayberry. And it'll be tough to be worse than they were last year, so I'd expect an improvement with the new additions. Even with a young offensive line dealing with injuries, the Texas O-line should have great success in the run game with an elite back like Bajon. After watching their games, the defensive line is able to be washed down consistently. They particularly struggle with misdirection and optionality. Now, Texas doesn't utilize much option running, but inside zone will allow Bijan to bounce to a new hole at the last second, achieving a similar effect. Their linebackers are their strongest run-stopping unit, but it's not enough when the defensive line and secondary aren't in unison in those efforts to stop the run. The ULM pass rush was ranked 85th in the country. On the defensive line, backup tackle Sir Darius Ellis is 10th if added to the Big 12. First string tackle Quincy Ledette is at 12th, and nose Caleb Thomas is at 16th. They have one edge pass rusher in the top 25 with Seth Mason at 20th. Linebacker Zach Woodard is the best pass rusher on the team and ranked first if added to the Big 12. Number 9 is a good player that you want to keep an eye out for. The Texas tackle shouldn't struggle as much since their edge rushers aren't numerous, but the interior offensive line will have to deal with two good pass rushing defensive tackles and a good nose. They can also send that great linebacker Zach Woodard on a blitz, so blitz pickup will be key with a younger offensive line, especially on the inside. All of them need serious reps before going against Alabama, but ultimately no one in the nation can simulate going against Anderson and Turner. So how is ULM in coverage? ULM's pass coverage gave up 289 yards per game last year, ranking 125th out of 130 teams. They lost almost their entire secondary besides safety Jabari Johnson, but Johnson still ranked 46th out of 50 coverage defenders if added to the Big 12. For the other safety spots, there's big questions with Trey Odom playing 157 coverage snaps last year, Tavier Williams playing 122, and Keydrain Callaghan at 25. We'll have to see how they perform in their new starting roles. At corner, there is potential for improvement with the two new transfers, but that's yet to be seen. Texas should have success in the pass game, even with shaky quarterback play early on, a young offensive line, and a wide receiver room down its number two receiver. The goal for the quarterback is to not be tempted to make silly mistakes, assuming ULM is a lesser opponent. Avoid arrogance and make the plays provided as they will be there statistically. The value here is to prepare for a good Alabama secondary in week two, so don't get used to making sketchy throws just because you can technically make them work against the ULM secondary. I think ULM is a team on the rise, but it's still too early into their ascent. I'm interested to see how ULM looks later in the season, especially in the coming years. Once again, knowing what we know now, four wins last year makes you tip your hat to Bowden, showing the team outperformed their shortcomings and had belief facing long odds. 
We want to see Texas shine early, limit mistakes, and enforce their will on ULM. Because Week 2 Alabama is coming to town, and that's the biggest test we've faced in years. Thanks for hanging out. Watch some more of my videos here. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you want to support quality Texas content. As always, welcome.